Hey guys, if you love daily fantasy sports, be sure to check out DraftKings. We'll have a link in the description below. It is our referral link. So if you guys want to check out DraftKings and play over there, you can help us out on the channel by using that referral link. It will be in the comment section as well as in the description of this video. Let's get started. What is up, everybody? Nick Karen here again with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. Guys, it is week six of the NFL season this year, man. I am very, very excited. Week five was very good to me, actually. Uh, and week six is starting off pretty strong as well. I've got Devonta Freeman in a couple leagues, Mark Ingram in a couple leagues. Got some good touchdown numbers out of those guys. Looking pretty darn good heading into this weekend's games. And I want to be able to be here to help you guys as well. Uh, Just again, guys, I want to remind everybody that every weekend, every Sunday morning, we're doing live streaming here on the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash clickwit. Guys, you will see my live stream pop up there. I will answer your guys' questions before the kickoff of Sunday's NFL games. So it's really the best way to get my opinion on stuff with the most information that we have, with the most up-to-date, questionable statuses and actives, inactives, that kind of stuff. Uh, And I can give you guys the best information that I have. So again, if you have lineup questions for week six of the NFL season or any week this season, be sure to stop on by the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash click with TV again, and you guys will be able to ask me those questions live on stream. We've got a video thing. It's something fun that we do every week to kind of interact with all you guys. So again, head on over there. Sunday morning starts at about 1030 a.m. Central Time, so it's about an hour and a half or so before NFL kickoff on Sunday. So uh, with that being said, guys, I just want to let you know as well, there is a slight possibility that we won't be doing it this week. Uh, and, and the only reason I say that is because uh, my only sister, I have one sister, uh, one sibling, frankly, uh, and she's actually right on the verge of popping. <laughs> she's, uh, she's pregnant right now. And we're really excited to have a new baby in the family. My daughter is going to be an older cousin. I'm going to be an uncle for the first time. That's going to be pretty cool. So uh, yeah, there's a possibility that she will actually be having the baby on Sunday morning. If that happens, obviously, I'm not going to be here to do the live stream. But other than that, though, guys, I will definitely be available for you guys uh, if she is not currently uh, having the baby, basically. So, uh, again, I'll give you guys an update on Twitter whether or not that's happening. But uh, with that being said, guys, let's get into the show and let's talk about the fantasy question of the day. We did this last week. We talked about your most disappointing players and uh, you guys had some really great answers. Some of you guys talked about Jimmy Graham, which was a really good one. Um, Obviously, the CJ Andersons, Jeremy Hills of the world were brought up. Uh, There were a whole bunch of different guys that you guys had talked about. Peyton Manning was one. Uh, I think somebody said Russell Wilson was one. One. Uh, I'm trying to think of some others. Calvin Johnson was one. Although I will say, I think I disagree a little bit about Calvin Johnson. I understand, obviously, we, we've expected Calvin Johnson to be basically a lock as a top five, at worst, top ten wide receiver for the past couple of years, or really, frankly, throughout the majority of his career. But um, unfortunately, that hasn't been the case over the past couple of, of uh, weeks of the season. He hasn't quite lived up to that expectation. However, I will say about Calvin Johnson, in PPR leagues, he is still pretty much living up to what we had hoped. Uh, At least he's given us a good floor. He's catching five or more passes pretty much every week. You know, it's only for 50, 60 yards, but you know, in in a PPR league, that's an 11 point game. It's not the end of the world. It's not a great game by any means, and he definitely needs to get into the end zone. But um, I disagreed with some of you on the Calvin Johnson analysis there. I don't think he's been that disappointing, at least not in comparison to, uh, you know, the CJ Andersons and and those type of guys, uh, Lamar Millers of the world, those types of players. But uh, let's talk about the fantasy question of the day this week. And if you guys have some answers, do me a favor, leave those in the comment section below. I would be glad to uh, to hear them from you and kind of interact and, uh, you know, just kind of get your guys' opinion on these various different things that we talk about on a weekly basis. But the fantasy question for today is, which player are you most excited about having in your lineup this weekend who you didn't draft to be a starter on your team originally? So this is a guy who maybe you drafted and, you know, as like your RB3, uh, your wide receiver four, or maybe you didn't even draft him. Maybe you picked him up in free agency. 
what players are you most excited about having in your lineup this weekend? Now, I will say that obviously there are guys like Devonta Freeman who have already had a big game this week, and uh, he would probably fit right into this uh, this question. But let's talk about guys who haven't played yet, guys who are going to be playing on Sunday. And for me, I think it has to be Carson Palmer. I didn't draft Carson Palmer as a, as a starter in any of my leagues. I did end up drafting him as a backup, as, as kind of like a, almost like a handcuff or a, a streaming, giving me options type of quarterback when I drafted guys like Ryan Tannehill and Sam Bradford. And now he's basically become an every week starter. I'm not even really looking at the other guys. He has been an absolute freaking stud the entire year so far. He's had 16 or more fantasy points standard scoring in every single game this season. He's the number four overall quarterback behind basically your elite players and then Andy Dalton, for some reason, is way up there. Uh, But this is a great matchup for Carson Palmer as well. The Steelers have given up some big games already to opposing quarterbacks. They gave up 365 yards and two touchdowns to Phillip Rivers last week. So I think Carson Palmer is a good bet to get near that 300-yard mark with multiple touchdowns as he has done throughout the majority of the season so far. First five weeks of the year, he's had four multiple touchdown games, and he has looked very, very good overall. Uh, you know, there really isn't anything that concerns me about his game so far. So I definitely expect Carson Palmer to continue with what he's been doing. And uh, with that being said, guys, he should probably be in your lineup if you have him. I don't really think there are many quarterbacks at this point who you could own that you wouldn't start uh, Carson Palmer ahead of. It's pretty much like the Andrew Lux of the world, uh, possibly if you're still holding on to hope of, with him. Uh, and then like you're obviously your Aaron Rodgers and your Tom Brady. Other than that, I I just don't think that there are many guys out there that you could realistically want to start above Carson Palmer right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely excited to have Paul Palmer in my lineup. But I want to hear from you guys. Who is a player that you guys were not expecting much from who has done a lot for you and you're expected? Or maybe he hasn't even done anything for you yet, but, you know, you you love the situation for some reason. Maybe it's a, a Kamar Aiken or, or somebody like that who you haven't actually put into your lineup yet, but, you know, you really like this matchup this week that Kamar Aiken has against the 49ers. Something like that. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd be excited to hear from you guys. Now let's move on and talk about Thursday Night Football. Uh, The big story, obviously, man, Devonta Freeman. Where did this guy come from? A fourth-round pick from last year. uh, Didn't do much as a rookie. And now he is the number one overall running back in fantasy football. It's been unbelievable so far. This guy had 13 attempts. 100 yards and a touchdown on the ground, and then he also added eight receptions for 56 yards and another touchdown through the air. I mean, this is getting ridiculous at this point. He is putting up such insane numbers. It's really difficult to to qualify him as anything other than a number one, maybe number two running back in fantasy football going forward, because this stuff doesn't look fluky. I mean, we're talking about, what is that? Eight rushing touchdowns and a receiving touchdowns, nine touchdowns over what his past five games. That is absolutely ridiculous. That's like LaDainian Tomlinson in his prime best season of all time for fantasy running back stats. These things are absolutely ridiculous at this point, guys. Now, I will say one thing. Uh, Devontae Freeman does have a little bit of competition in the backfield with Tevin Coleman, so there is a little bit of concern with that, but like... He is just dominating. He's running away with that job. I don't really think that they could realistically put Coleman back up on the field right now uh, in a consistent fashion at all. It has to be Devonta Freeman as long as he's producing like this. And what's really great right now is that, uh, like I said, it doesn't look fluky and it's been consistent. Four straight games now with 25 or more fantasy points in standard scoring leagues. That doesn't even count for PPR leagues where he's blowing 25 points out of the water. I mean, these are crazy. These are like high-end quarterback numbers out of a running back. And you just don't get that in fantasy football. It's absolutely crazy. Now, I will say that I had uh, Devontae Freeman listed as a PPR sleeper coming into the year. But even I didn't see this coming. I mean, I I thought maybe you might be able to to slide him in and like kind of like a, a better Darren Sproles type of numbers, I guess. You know, like maybe he doesn't catch as many passes, but he's more consistent because he gets more rushing attempts kind of a thing. I don't know what I would compare him to, um, you know, because it's not like a level of like a Matt Forte or anything like that. That's not what I was thinking, but I, I was thinking just somebody who's going to get a good number of carries and a good number of catches on the year in a good offense. And it's been way more than that. Uh, what's great for me is that 
I believed in Devonta Freeman in PPR leagues, at least coming into the year, and I was drafting him maybe a round or so before his ADP, which meant that I almost have him in all of my PPR leagues at this point. I, I have him in, uh, I think, five of my nine total money leagues that I have. Uh, not all of them are PPR, of course, uh, but I have him in more than half of my fantasy leagues right now, which has been amazing. You know, I mean, he's giving me such a great baseline stat that I'm just crushing my opponents most weeks. And I'm sure most of you that also have Freeman right now are, are experiencing the same type of thing. Because when a guy puts up 30 points for you out of the running back position, the other guys don't have to do nearly as much to pick up the slack. You know, it, it's really just, uh, you know, you got to go out there and have a decent game. Devonta Freeman is the rock solid cornerstone right now of fantasy football championship teams. I don't see anybody right now that has Freeman out there who isn't at least at 500, or, or I guess obviously you couldn't be 500 right now with only five games. Could be if you were 2 2 and 1, hypothetically, I suppose. But, uh, you know, if you were, it, it, you have to probably be at least, I mean, at the very worst, you've got a couple of wins, right? Just out of Devonta Freeman being such a beast. So it's been a great thing to have Freeman so far. And like I said, it doesn't look fluky. His running style has been great this year. And Atlanta is running, uh, they're blocking that edge for the run so amazingly. And it's kind of surprising because Atlanta really hasn't been a great run blocking team over the past, I don't know, five, six seasons. Uh, with it's been basically back to the Michael Turner days, like when Michael Turner was really running the ball effectively. They haven't really had a very good running game in I don't know, like I said, five six years or so. Uh, it's been Devonta Freeman that has been the the real kind of surprise of fantasy football, but I think even for the Falcons, he has to be a huge surprise. This has to be something that uh, they didn't even see coming. I, I, I don't think that they did, given the fact that he wasn't even technically listed as their starter coming into the year. Tevin Coleman was actually listed as the starter, I believe, coming into the year, or at least he got the majority of the carries to start the year. So, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens going forward here with Devontae Freeman, but what I will say about him is that uh, it doesn't look like this is going to be going away. Now, obviously, we can't expect that he's going to put up these type of numbers every week, but RB1 numbers are very, very realistic out of Devontae Freeman, and I will say I am not going to be selling any more on Devontae Freeman. I, I've mentioned that, you know, I, there were a couple leagues where I, I wanted to sell him. I ended up not getting the type of offers that I wanted in, in return for Devontae Freeman, so I actually didn't end up selling him in any leagues, despite the fact that I've been open to for a couple of weeks now. Uh, but at this point, the only guy who I would trade him for is Le'Veon Bell. I mean, when I say the only guy, I'm talking like the only guy in fantasy football. You you could offer me Gronk, Brady, Aaron Rodgers, you could offer me, uh, you know, an Adrian Peterson, a uh, an Antonio Brown, anybody, Julio Jones, even. I'm not trading them. I'm not trading away Devontae Freeman for anybody right now. He's just putting up too crazy of numbers, and I don't expect it to go anywhere. So Devontae Freeman's definitely my guy. I'm holding on to him, and uh, I certainly think that everybody that owns him right now is very, very happy. Now, obviously, Devonta Freeman has been the sleeper of the year, if you want to call him that. Somebody that we really didn't expect to have this type of a season, but uh, has been amazing so far. But, you know, what I wanted to do here at this portion of the of the uh, podcast was talk a little bit about some players that I think are kind of being undervalued for this week. We have a lot of teams on buys this week, and, you know, there's going to be some situations, a lot of injuries as well, where people are having to mix in players into their lineup that maybe we're not so comfortable with. Uh, and, and I think... You know, some of these guys that I'm going to be talking about here may not even be owned in your league. Actually, a lot of them probably aren't owned in your league. So make sure that you go out there and you pick these guys up and play them over some of the guys who you have some more question marks about. You know, guys that uh, haven't really done much this year or guys that are in really, really tough matchups that, you know, you're not super excited about. I think the guys that I've put on this list might be able to help you out, might be able to bridge that gap that you need between, uh, you know, putting together a, a solid game versus a terrible game, which is, you know, a lot of times we have these players on our roster that we expect to be our guys that step in in the bye weeks, and they're just not living up to the expectations. So we've got to look at other options, and, and I think this is the time to do it. So what I wanted to do was give you guys a couple of options for each position. Uh, we're going to talk about quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight end, uh, and, and I'll give you guys a couple of guys and, and kind of reasons why I think that you should maybe consider them this week if you're looking for somebody to fill in at one of these positions. So first off, we're going to start off at quarterback. Obviously, we've got Jay Cutler against uh, the Detroit Lions. Now, Cutler last week, actually pretty productive. 
uh, quietly had a pretty solid game this past week. Uh, he went for 252 yards and two touchdowns, and that was without Eddie Royal or Alshon Jeffrey in the lineup against Kansas City. So obviously Cutler's got something working for him. I mean, they didn't have a, ta- a terrible game. He's throwing the ball to Martellus Bennett. He's throwing it to Matt Forte. Uh, and he's finding guys like Marcus Wilson as well. And these guys are really coming together to put together at least a decent passing game here in Chicago right now. What I like about this matchup is that Detroit ranks 25th right now in fantasy points per game given up to quarterbacks. So this is a solid matchup for Cutler. And Cutler's done fairly well against Detroit in the past as well. So I think there's a possibility here that we're going to have a solid game out of Jay Cutler again. Maybe another 250-yard or so game with multiple touchdowns. That would be nice for a Cutler uh, kind of as a fill-in quarterback this week. And another guy that I really am kind of looking forward to seeing what he does is Brian Hoyer. Now, Brian Hoyer took over this past week mid-game for Ryan Mallett. Uh, for the Texans, but he was still able to go out there and throw for 312 yards and two touchdowns against Indianapolis. Like I said, he didn't even start the game. I mean, that, those are huge numbers. Those are really good numbers, even for if you play the full game. But he didn't even play the full game, and he still put up over 300 and two touchdowns. So that's pretty nice. The Jaguars that he's going up against are 21st against opposing quarterbacks. And this past week, they let Jameis Winston throw for 209 yards and a touchdown against them on only 19 attempts. The Jaguars were absolutely terrible this past week. Uh, they got blown out by the Buccaneers. And what was actually kind of uh, something that you might not consider, the 209 yards and a touchdown that Winston got, obviously not great fantasy numbers, but on 19 attempts, that's really, really good. But um, the big thing is, is that this game was already kind of a blowout in the first half. So Tampa Bay wasn't really passing much in the second half, which obviously led to a bigger game from Doug Martin and a lower than what would otherwise be a game for Jameis Winston. So my opinion is that the Jaguars this week They're at home. Uh, I do think that they're going to be able to put up some more points in this one, and hopefully their defense will play a little bit better against the run at least, Uh, and uh, that could lead to more uh, production out of Brian Hoyer this week and DeAndre Hopkins and these guys in this passing game. We're hoping that we can get some quality production out of Brian Hoyer this week. Again, this is sleepers. We're not talking about Brian Hoyer as replacing, you know, a Tom Brady in your lineup or something like that, but he can go in there and he can replace a guy who isn't who isn't performing well or if your normal quarterback's on a bye or if you had Tyrod Taylor, for example, and you're not quite sure if he's going to play yet because we still don't really know on that. These are the type of players that you can potentially plug in if you need to. Brian Hoyer, Jay Cutler, these kind of guys are going to get you good quality fantasy points, I think, this week. A couple other guys I want to talk about running backs. Chris Thompson, Washington Redskins. Uh, this is the third guy in this backfield. But he might actually be the most valuable guy, at least in PPR leagues going forward. I think uh, a lot of people don't realize that he's averaging nine touches per game over the past three games, which doesn't seem like a lot. But when you consider that a lot of them are coming in the receiving game in PPR leagues, that's actually really, really valuable. And the Jets are actually third best against opposing running backs in terms of points per game allowed. And they haven't even allowed a running back touchdown yet. But... I think that actually hurts Alfred Morris and Matt Jones more than it hurts uh, Chris Thompson because I think Chris Thompson's going to be out there a lot, especially if they fall behind and the Redskins end up having to pass a lot in this one. That could lead to a lot of Chris Thompson on the field, and we could see some good receptions out of him. Not quite so excited about him in non-PPR leagues. I think his upside is fairly limited given the fact that there are the three running backs there, but he could have a decent game this week in PPR leagues. Another guy that you could be looking at in PPR leagues, Duke Johnson. Now, he's also somebody that you could use, you could roll out there. I think I like him better than Chris Thompson in standard scoring leagues because he's getting more pure carries. But Duke Johnson is actually touching the ball a good number as well. He has 21 receptions over his past three games. That's like wide receiver one type numbers. Now, obviously, he's not getting the yardage of a wide receiver one, but out of pure receptions in a PPR league, that's seven per week over his past three games. That's a ton of receptions. Denver is actually giving up eight or more receptions. It's it's like an 8.2 or something like that average per game in terms of receptions to opposing running backs. So that is a ton. And despite the fact that they're actually, Denver's very, very good against the run. They're a very good defense in general, by the way. Um, This this is the type of situation where Duke Johnson's probably going to be more valuable this week than Isaiah Crowell, because despite the fact that he might touch the ball fewer times overall, 
A lot of it's going to come in the receiving game, and I think we could see him break off something real nice down the field uh, if they're, you know, if, if Denver is really playing against the run and, and he can maybe come out of the backfield or something like that on a swing pass or something, and uh, hopefully he can break something loose out of, out of a situation like that. Unlike other third down backs, though, the thing I like about Duke Johnson that makes him a little bit more valuable than like, you you know, obviously Lance Dunbar isn't, he's injured, so he's not on this list anymore. But, you know, your guys like a, a Reggie Bush, a Darren Sproles, um, even a Danny Woodhead, even, um, you know, guys like that, Shane Vereen, is the thing that I like about Duke Johnson is that he's actually getting carries as well. He has 17 carries over his past two games in addition to the 21 receptions over his past three games. So he's touching the ball a lot right now in this Cleveland backfield. I think he's pretty clearly the most talented guy in the backfield as well. So uh, there wouldn't be, it really wouldn't be that surprising if he overtook this job and just became the starter and uh, Isaiah Crowell kind of stepped in and, and acted as kind of the complimentary back to Duke Johnson. So if Duke Johnson's available in your in your leagues right now, especially in PPR leagues, I think you got to go out there and grab him. He should have probably been picked up in, in most leagues right now, but he might he might be still kind of floating around there out there possibly. So uh, take a look at him, see what he does, and uh, hopefully he has a nice game against Denver this week. But it is a very difficult matchup overall. Denver defense again, very very good. A couple other receivers that I like, Jamison Crowder. This is a guy who I think is going very much under the radar right now. A lot of people have never heard of this guy. 21 catches over his past three games. Um, And the other thing that I really like about him on the Redskins offense right now is that he's playing side he's playing basically to the the side of uh, Pierre Garçon so what's happening right now is that Pierre Garçon is typically pulling the coverage from the top cornerback and I expect that to happen this week as well uh, as the Redskins go up against the Jets so you could see Jamison Crowder playing out of the slot there is also a possibility that Deshaun Jackson plays this week I've heard so if that does happen that's going to mean that Jamison Crowder is still going to be on the field by the way they have made uh, they've made it very very clear that Jamison Crowder is going to play the slot for them going Going forward, so it's not dependent on Deshaun Jackson coming out. If, if Deshaun Jackson does come out and play, I actually think that might help Jamison Crowder because it might help pull away some of that coverage, pull some safeties deep, and hopefully he can do some damage underneath out of the slot. So I, again, I really like Jamison Crowder as a wide receiver this week. If you need somebody in a flex or as a wide receiver three, something like that, he does have some good upside this week. Another guy in that same game, Eric Decker. He's just getting completely disrespected right now in fantasy leagues. I I don't understand it. He's only played three games this year. One due to an injury. Obviously, he was out. And then uh, they also had their bye week already. But... Eric Decker, despite only playing in those three games, still falls in technically as a wide receiver three in terms of total points. So that's pretty crazy. He's still putting up the same type of numbers that basically he's he's been a wide receiver two up until this point. In terms of points per game, it's like high-end wide receiver two numbers that he's putting up right now. So that is very, very nice. He scored a touchdown in every game that he has played so far this season. And the Redskins defense is actually pretty good against the run. They're not so great against the pass. So I do expect there to be plenty of passing going on in this game. I think the Jets are going to go out there and chuck the ball a lot. Hopefully we're going to see some Jamison Crowder on one side of the ball. Eric Decker on the other side of the ball. The other thing to keep in mind is that the Redskins secondary right now is banged up. D'Angelo Hall's out. And there are injuries to Bashad Breland as well as Chris Culliver. So these guys are already thin and it was kind of a weak unit to begin with. So, I mean, we're talking about backups behind guys that weren't great to begin with. So uh, this could be a really nice matchup for the likes of Brandon Marshall and, of course, Eric Decker like we're talking about here. Definitely take a look at those guys if you need some help and Eric Decker is available or if you're looking in a daily league or something like that for a cheaper wide receiver, Eric Decker is the kind of guy that you could definitely acquire, I think, right now for a cheap price in your standard leagues and he'll probably not be too expensive on daily sites either, so he could be a good value this week. At tight end, I want to talk about Richard Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers. He's seen his numbers increase pretty much, it's been basically every single week since Devontae Adams went out. He's getting more catches, more yards, he's being targeted more, uh, and we definitely like to see that. Now, obviously, there is not a direct correlation between Devontae Adams and Richard Rodgers. They don't play the same position. Um, They're really not doing the same type of things on the field, to be honest, 
but it just seems that Aaron Rodgers is looking toward Richard Rodgers more often now. So hopefully we can see that continue this week. He is up against a Chargers defense that is 24th right now against opposing tight ends in terms of points per game. And they're second against wide receivers as well. The Chargers very, very good against wide receivers, bad against tight ends. So I think there could be even more opportunity this week for Aaron Rodgers to squeeze one in, hopefully get him into the end zone for a a touchdown this week. That would be pretty nice for Richard Rodgers owners or people that take a chance on him this week. So let's talk now, guys, about something that I'd like to talk about every single week. I think it's the most important thing for fantasy football. If you're in leagues that allow trading, buying and selling at the right time is really one of the most important things that you can do for fantasy football. And it's really something that I focus on. This past week, I gave you some information on guys that I thought we could buy or sell on. Vincent Jackson was one of the guys that I was recommending selling. He was coming off a 10-catch, 147-yard game with a touchdown in uh, week four. Then in week five, One catch for 14 yards. Now, obviously, we talked about this one before. That was a little bit game flow dependent because the Buccaneers got up early. But even still, Jameis Winston threw for 209 yards and only 14 of those yards went to Vincent Jackson. That's not good. Uh, It's not a good ratio. And Vincent Jackson's this type of player. He's a guy who goes out there and he hits and misses. So uh, I think last week was a great time to sell on Vincent Jackson. Hopefully, some of you guys took my advice on that one. I told you guys also that I'm buying on a few players. Antonio Gates was one of them. I definitely wanted to get Antonio Gates onto my roster. Uh, If he was available in any league, obviously we're picking him up. And, And again, if he was somebody that could be acquired via trade, Definitely, I wanted you guys to go out there and do that. We talked about this a lot, that Antonio Gates is the kind of guy who was already producing elite fantasy numbers last year when he was healthy and everything. He was the number two fantasy football wide or tight end excuse me, this past year, uh, and really, he's starting off pretty strong again. Nine receptions, 92 yards, and two touchdowns. He's an old man at this point, but he still puts up very good numbers. Tight end is an extremely weak position this year, so Antonio Gates is going to put up great numbers this year. I don't see any reason why he doesn't finish in the top five at the position. I think he's a really, really great option right now, Uh, and I think, obviously, he was a great buy-low candidate this past week. Another guy, Todd Gurley. We, we saw some glimpses of him a couple of weeks back of him looking very, very good. I told you I'm still buying on him, even though I know a lot of people were asking a lot for him. I think Todd Gurley's a top 10 running back going forward. I really, really do. And I said that last week, and he proved me right. 30 carries for 159 yards. They had no problem giving him a full workload. And that's what we love to see from a fantasy standpoint. Jeff Fisher has, has never been afraid to give a full workload to a running back. So Todd Gurley's going to be that guy. As long as he's healthy, he's going to be a great, great fantasy asset. St. Louis isn't a great offense, but anytime that you touch the ball 20 to 30 times in a game, you're going to get quality fantasy production out of a running back. So I'm definitely looking forward to uh, having Todd Gurley on my fantasy rosters now that I went out there and bought him in a couple of different leagues. Last guy that I mentioned, uh, somebody that I told you guys to wait on, but to buy on after last Sunday's game, and I think that this is going to prove to be the right decision if you guys do it, Latavius Murray. I told you, again, wait, don't buy on him yet, but after Sunday's game against Denver, buy on him right away. 39 rushing yards, 18 receiving yards, terrible game for the Oakland offense, of course, very, very good Denver defense. But I still feel like Latavius Murray is somebody that I want to have on my fantasy rosters right now. I think he's a quality running back. I think he's going to be a solid RB2 going forward. He's going to have his matchups where he doesn't do well, obviously. I mean, this isn't a great offense. It's got some decent skill position players, some young guys who I think are going to break out. And uh, they could be good going forward for the, you know, in the next five years or so. Right now, they're not a great offense. So again, they're going to have their ups and their downs. But Latavius Murray is the bell cow running back there in Oakland in the same way that, uh, you know, your Todd Gurley is the bell cow running back in St. Louis. Although Latavius Murray is not going to touch the ball as often as Todd Gurley, in my opinion, because they're... um, Basically, the Oakland passing game is quite a bit better than the one in St. Louis. I, I, I still feel like Latavius Murray, like I said, is a buy low candidate. And right now, if you can go out there and get him, he hasn't had another game against anybody. So this is a reminder about Latavius Murray. Go out there and acquire him if you can right now, guys. His value is about as low as it can possibly be, in my opinion, unless he gets injured or something going forward. So let's talk about some other guys that I think we need to be buying low on. Uh, one of the big ones to me right now, is Eddie Lacy. And I know the people that own Eddie Lacy are probably like screaming right now at their computer screen or or at their headphones or whatever you guys are doing. Um, Here's the bottom line, man. Eddie Lacy 
is a talented player in a good offense. And I understand he had 27 rushing yards in week five. That's terrible. He's put up bad numbers. He hasn't been even an RB2 up until this point. And that's why we want to buy on him. Because this same type of situation played out in 2014. Now, I'm not going to say that Eddie Lacy is going to put up the same type of numbers that he did in the second half of the 2014 season when he was an R- a top-end RB1. But the bottom line is that Eddie Lacy started the season off terribly last year, and he finished really, really well. He only had one game of 50 or more rushing yards in 2014 in his first six games. So it's kind of panning out the same way that it did last year. You know, what we have currently with Eddie Lacy is basically a mirror image of what we had from him last year, but he still finished as the number six overall running back. This is a great offense. They're going to score a ton of points, and Eddie Lacy is their bell cow running back, just like these other guys are. So we want to acquire those types of players. We want to get them on our roster. It doesn't look like Eddie Lacy specifically is playing poorly or anything. Offensive line needs some work, obviously, with the blocking in the running game, but I still feel like they're doing... Uh, he's going to turn it around. I, I really do. I still feel like the, the Green Bay offense is good enough. And uh, as the weather starts to turn colder and colder, they're going to turn to their running game more and more. And that's going to be the same way when they, regardless of where they they play. They have two division opponents in Minnesota and, and um, Chicago that both play outdoors. So there's going to be a lot of outdoor football for the Green Bay Packers to end the season here. And it's going to be cold weather. There's going to be snow. And I don't like to just say, you know, cold weather, they're not going to pass as much. They're not going to take the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands by any means. I mean, this guy is probably the best quarterback in football right now, maybe only comparable to Tom Brady. And, uh, you know, they're not going to not throw the football. But I do believe that they're going to have a little bit more balanced of an attack going forward as the cold months come in. And that's when you really want a guy like Eddie Lacy because he can go out there and get those 100-yard games and he can rush for touchdowns as we've seen him do really throughout his career so far. So I'm definitely looking at Eddie Lacy as my number one buy low guy right now. I don't think his value is going to get any lower than it currently is. Next guy, Jordan Matthews, a guy that I'm also buying low on. He started the season off really, really strong, but over his past three games, he's been held under 50 yards. He's at least caught five passes, though, in all but one game so far this season, so I'm not overly concerned. He's still getting targeted a lot. If it was something where, you know, suddenly he's only getting targeted three, four times a game, I would be very, very concerned about that. But he's still getting targeted a lot. He's basically being targeted as a wide receiver one. So I'm not that concerned about what we've seen. When we're acquiring players, always keep in mind, guys, we don't get the points that they had before we acquired them. We're only talking about the points going forward. So despite the fact that he has had some disappointing games, the the outer lying factors uh, that we see, the things like the targets and, and just the fact that he is still the wide receiver one there, All those types of things, Sam Bradford playing better now, all these types of things lead me to believe that Jordan Matthews is going to turn things around. He is going to start to perform at least as a wide receiver too, and I think that you can get him for basically wide receiver two, wide receiver three prices, and so I'm I'm definitely looking to do that. Very happy uh, to acquire him in another league that I have uh, where it's a PPR league. I like Matthews better in PPR leagues. I'm not quite sure that he's going to be out there catching 10 touchdowns this year, but hey, the upside is there with him. Nelson Aguilar is still coming along, but he's not quite there. So this guy is still going to be targeted, you know, 8 to 10, 12, up to 15 times a game, depending on the game flow situations here with the uh, with the Eagles. So if Sam Bradford continues to turn things around, I do expect Jordan Matthews to finish at least as a wide receiver too. So go out there and grab him if you can, guys. More guys to talk about for uh, buying. Lamar Miller is, uh, is somebody that I'm definitely interested in right now. Um, and obviously very similar to Eddie Lacy. Um, very disappointing to start the season. 26 yards this past week against the Jets. Now, I always hesitate to really use those games overseas in London as like an example of what they're what they're really worth because there's so much things like jet lag and playing on a different field and playing in a neutral field where the fans aren't really cheering for one team or another. It's a really unique situation and I, I really tend to kind of almost, I I don't disregard those games necessarily, but I kind of set them to not be as important to me as the other ones. Still though, even if you disregard that game, Lamar Miller has been under 40 yards in his previous two games as well. So this is kind of a trend at this point that he is not performing very well. 
The thing that I will say is that it doesn't to me appear to be that Lamar Miller looks particularly poor. Same thing with Eddie Lacy. It, it, like when you watch the game film, it's not like they're dancing behind the line of scrimmage and then getting tackled. It's not like they're going down at first contact every single time. Um, basically, to me, it looks like a, a situation of, of not being used enough. And obviously, we saw that the Miami coaching staff is getting some uh, getting some turnaround right now. We're, we're starting to see guys get fired, and the offensive coordinator there is still there, but he's got to have more pressure on him, you know, uh, when you're not getting the ball into the hands of a player like Lamar Miller, who we've seen perform really well, and I, I think a lot of people don't realize Lamar Miller finished as an RB1 last year in fantasy football and standard scoring formats, so, uh, you know, it's guys like this that can really turn things around for a team like Miami that's struggling. I feel like you've got to get the ball into Lamar Miller's hands, and I'm sure the coaching staff is no, is going to be doing that. Uh, I don't see any reason that they're not going to spend this bye week, uh, you know, really focusing on getting the ball in the hands of their big time playmakers. I mean, it's it's just bizarre to me that they keep giving the ball to players that aren't anywhere near as talented as uh, you know the Jarvis Landrys and the, the Lamar Millers. It's it's crazy, and not to mention Ryan Tannehill's playing really really poorly. But uh, I, I do think they're going to turn it around. I think that they're going to be a better team going forward. So I'm not overly concerned about Lamar Miller what he's done so far. Uh, I mean, it's concerning to some extent, but the great thing is is that you can get him for very very cheap right now. It's it's going to be something where I, I just personally think that Lamar Miller is going to at least finish as an RB2. If you were to take this, if you were to eliminate the first five weeks of the season and go from this point going forward, I do believe that Lamar Miller is going to be an RB2. So, you know, if you could get him for that price, I would go out there and do it. You know, especially if you can get him for something cheaper. If you could trade him for a player who's had a couple decent games that. Uh, you know, we don't expect a whole lot from. I would probably do that. I think the upside is much better better out of Lamar Miller. Now let's talk about some guys that I'm selling on. Uh, the, you know, this is every bit as important, guys. We always talk about who should I go out there and trade for. Okay, that's great. But you also have to talk about guys on your roster who you should trade away right now. And really what we always try to do is trade them just like the, the real stock market. We're trying to sell these guys at their highest value or close to their highest value at least. So we're going to focus on guys that have had some pretty big games. Uh, and really what the big position that we always try to focus on is running back because um, you know running back to me is always the one that is hardest to find talent at quarterback unless you're in a two quarterback league you can always find somebody to fill in you know we talked about Brian Hoyer we talked about Jake Cutler I mean there are guys last week Josh McCown you know there's guys out there that are available in almost every league that you can plug in and play and get good production out of that's not the case at running back we pretty much need to go out there and uh, trade for these guys typically so uh, that's why I think it's really it's really important to focus on the running back position in trades Gave you guys some options to trade for. Now I'm going to tell you guys some guys to trade away. Number one, Chris Johnson. To me, I, I think Chris Johnson is the prototypical sell high right now. He's the NFL's second leading rusher after five weeks. Andre Ellington's back. You know, Andre Ellington's back on the field. David Johnson got multiple goal line carries this past week and got two touchdowns. I mean, you just look at all these factors and it's like, okay, I understand even if Chris Johnson is going to continue to be the RB1 there in in Arizona, which I'm not 100% sold on, by the way. I know that that's what the coaching staff has kind of made it out to be, and it would make sense that you don't give Andre Ellington a full workload. But I wouldn't be surprised if Andre Ellington's out there for, you know, 30% of the snaps. David Johnson's out there for 20% of the snaps, or or maybe it's 35, 15, something like that, where, you know, we're talking about... 50% of the snaps going to other players, then Chris Johnson's still getting 50% of the snaps, and yeah, he's still the RB1 there, but is that enough on the field time to be an RB1 in fantasy? Especially when you're not getting the goal line carries, as Chris Johnson has not been, at least this past week with David Johnson coming in, three carries, two touchdowns, I mean, that's just, that's brutal for fantasy owners. I mean, these are the types of things that we really have to think about. Andre Ellington looked good, too. Three carries, 63 yards. He broke off a long touchdown in week five in his first game back. So, I mean, I really wouldn't be surprised if it's it's more of a timeshare than people are making it out to be right now, and especially who what the Arizona coaching staff is making, making it out to be. So I'm definitely selling on Chris Johnson right now. If I can get anything close to RB1 value for Chris Johnson, and again, he's been the, an RB1, so there's no reason to think that you couldn't. If you can get anything close to an RB1 value, though, in, in return for a Chris Johnson, 
I would definitely do it. I don't think that he's going to continue to be one of the NFL's leading rushers going forward. They have some tough matchups there in that in that division. Uh, St. Louis's defense is good. Uh, obviously, Seattle's defense is very, very good. Uh, and San Francisco, from time to time, can step up and play well as well. I'm, you know, I'm concerned about that team going forward for a multitude of reasons. But uh, definitely, Chris Johnson is somebody that I'm looking to sell right now. Another guy, running back again, Joseph Randall, Dallas Cowboys. This one hurts a little bit because I was sold on Joseph Randall coming into the year as being the RB1 there in Dallas. And I think so far throughout the first five weeks of the season, we've seen Joseph Randall be the RB1. And he's had a couple of really nice fantasy days. But from an NFL standpoint, he is not playing that well. You can't just look at the stat line and say, oh, he scored three touchdowns, so obviously he had a great game. That's not reality. I mean, this guy did not play well in the games. So, uh, you know, I am not surprised that there is discussion right now about making a move at running back, whether it be to Darren McFadden or whether it be to the guy that everybody's rumoring right now, Kristen Michael, who was acquired this right before the season started. Now, uh, I will say Dallas made another move at quarterback and they made it very public that Brandon Whedon sitting, Matt Castle starting for the Cowboys, but still... Uh, you know, it's concerning right now that Joseph Randall is, uh, he's not being, uh, he's not being touted as the guy, you know, we're, we're hearing rumors from basically from the Cowboys coaching staff themselves almost saying, yeah, this is basically an open competition right now. It could be Christian Michael going forward. So to me, I think Joseph Randall is somebody that if you're, you're in a league where the person that owned, or if you're in a league and you own Joseph Randall and you can go ahead and trade Joseph Randall away to somebody in your league that maybe doesn't play pay that close of attention to uh, fantasy football, I would go out there and do it, man. I know it's uh, it's kind of one of those things where you might feel bad trading a guy away when the other person doesn't know that much about the situation, but we're not trading an injured player. We're not being scumbags about it. It's just you've got to know the information that you have, and it's fantasy football is competitive, man. Don't feel bad about this kind of stuff if, if you can at all avoid it in your conscience. Uh, trade away a Joseph Randall because I think that best case scenario is that Joseph Randall's in a situation like Chris Johnson right now where he's splitting carries between him and Darren McFadden and Kristen Michael going forward. So 50% of the carries I think is his upside going forward. And that's just not enough. I understand the Cowboys offense is very good. Their offensive line's very good. But with Tony Romo being out, the offense as a whole isn't very good. So there's not a whole lot of scoring opportunities for them right now. And I just feel like maybe Kristen Michael might be the guy going forward. So just, you know, it, obviously this is also a, a selling feature for Kristen Michael. If he's available in your league and you're in a, a even a 10-team league, I think in an 8-team league you could probably avoid picking him up right now until we see something. But in anything like a 10-team league, a 12-team league, or bigger you got to go out there and get Kristen Michael if he's available right now on your waiver wire. I think he's uh, one of the most important guys to go out there and grab right now before he has one of these big games where the Cowboys just decide, yep, Kristen Michael's our guy going forward, and then you have to fight people on the waiver wire. These are the kind of things where you have some information prior to it. If you can get rid of somebody that's maybe not performing that well, such as, let's say, a David Johnson, who granted did score two touchdowns but only got three carries. A lot of people are still rostering him. If you could drop David Johnson and pick up Kristen Michael, for example, I would definitely go out there and do that. Another guy that I want to talk about, Doug Martin. Monster game this past week. 24 carries, 123 yards, three total touchdowns. For Doug Martin against uh, the Jaguars this past week. Monster game, man. Doug Martin now back-to-back 100-yard rushing days. We haven't seen that in a long time out of him. But I'm still not buying it. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just not buying it. The Jaguars look horrible right now on, on defense. Tampa Bay just isn't that good. And I think they're they're going to be behind in a lot of games. I, I really do. I think that there is going to be it's going to be a typical Tampa Bay situation where uh, you know they're really just not that good of a team. And you know there's going to be those games like they had in Week One where they got absolutely murdered and nobody touches the ball out of the backfield. And when that happens, Doug Martin becomes very very poor as a fantasy player. So I'm just not looking at him as a as an RB1 or I'm I'm basically looking at Doug Martin still as a borderline RB2. He struggled against the Saints, struggled against the Texans and obviously against the Titans as well, who've all been beaten up by other running games. So it's not like the Titan or the uh the Buccaneers are out here having just some amazing running game. It, it's not like that. It was situational against the Jaguars and I don't expect it to continue. So if you can get good return for Doug Martin after back-to-back nice games, go out there and do it, friends. Last guy that I want to talk about as a sell high, kind of a killer man from fantasy owners right now, um, but he's he's 
he himself is putting up good numbers right now, good enough that you still can get something good for him. And that's Demarius Thomas. Uh, too late on Peyton Manning right now, I think. Obviously, he's just been horrible this year. I swung and missed on Peyton Manning in one league. Um, I, I definitely was, and and really, I talked about him coming into the year as somebody that I was confident in it. And um, I was wrong. You know, what can we say? Peyton Manning has not looked like a quarterback one. He hasn't looked like the guy who's going to the Hall of Fame. And it's hurting his receivers, without question. Demarius only has one 100-yard game so far this season and only one touchdown this season. These are the kind of things that we did not expect. Uh, I mean, obviously, Demarius has been good enough because he's still getting a couple of, you know, catches per week at least. And he's had a couple of 90-yard games. So it's not like he's been horrible by any means. He's still been serviceable as like a wide receiver too. Um, But he's not putting up wide receiver numbers like we've seen from him every year under Peyton Manning. And uh, to me, with Peyton Manning struggling, Demarius is the one who suffers the most because Demarius is the guy who is typically going deep. He's the guy who's going on the the, the deeper passing routes, basically, Uh, whereas Emmanuel Sanders is typically playing out of the slot and uh, not going deep quite as often. So we're seeing more, you know, Slow, the the low yardage catches out of Emmanuel Sanders where he might have nine receptions for 70 yards, for example. Uh, whereas Demarius Thomas, if he were to get nine receptions in a game, it would probably be more like 125 yards. You know what I'm saying? Like we're we're really not seeing the types of uh, the, of yards per catch out of Emmanuel Sanders as we do out of Demarius Thomas. So it, it makes sense, obviously, that if Peyton Manning's struggling to throw the ball down the field, which he certainly has been, that Demarius Thomas is going to struggle because of that. And again, I understand that Demarius is putting up solid enough numbers, and that's actually why I'm saying trade him right now because I don't. I, I think that the numbers that he's put up are masking enough to a person that would be acquiring him that it doesn't seem concerning. Like we look at Demarius Thomas and it's like, well, Peyton struggled, but he's still catching six, seven, eight passes a game which is great. It's fine in a PPR. It's not so good in a standard scoring league. Uh, But the bottom line is that Demarius Thomas is still being viewed as a wide receiver one. Like if we were doing a redraft right now, I I think that, I think there's no question that he would still be considered one of probably the top eight wide receivers being drafted. I personally don't view him that highly going forward. I would almost rather have Emmanuel Sanders going forward than Demarius Thomas, for example. So Again, I would go out there and uh, I would probably trade uh, Demarius Thomas right now. If you can get, uh, you know, a a solid wide receiver going forward, um, you know, obviously I think right now DeAndre Hopkins is the number one guy on my list going forward. We talked about this. It's like him, Julio Jones, AJ Green, great guys like that. But if you can go out there and still get another quality wide receiver, one type player, one of those guys would be amazing if you could turn that. I doubt it at this point. I mean, there might be somebody out there that wants to sell high on, on uh, DeAndre Hopkins, but I'm a lot more convinced right now with Hopkins than I am on Demarius Thomas, for example. But um, again, if you can just go out there and get either you know somebody that's comparable to Demarius Thomas in terms of their average draft position, I would probably do that right now. I, I really, really would. Or if you can get another quality receiver and an upgrade at running back or something like that, I would definitely try and trade Demarius Thomas right now. The thing that I'm really most concerned about with him is that they've already played against uh, the Broncos. They've already played against the two worst defenses against opposing wide receivers, which are Baltimore and Kansas City. And although Demarius was okay in those games, he wasn't great. He had 15 catches for 176 yards, no touchdowns against the Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs, who again are the two worst defenses so far this season in terms of points per game given up to the wide receiver position. So... He's already had two amazing matchups, hasn't gotten into the end zone in those. It's concerning to me at this point is basically what I'm getting at here. So uh, with that said, guys, those are the buy sells. And that's actually going to wrap up the show for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, If you did, do me a big favor. Click on that like button. Let me know that you guys are listening to this. I would greatly appreciate it. I have a lot of fun doing the podcast. And I know a lot of people do listen to it. uh, But it helps me out, obviously, on the channel. If you guys press the like button, if you leave comments. uh, And obviously, if you just subscribe to the channel as well. It's uh, it's a big help to me. So thank you guys so much in advance for that. I do want to also remind you guys, Sunday mornings, Barring my sister having her baby, like I mentioned before, I should be here tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, to uh, give you guys my up-to-the-minute 
up to as close as we can before kickoff. Uh, fantasy advice, answering your questions. We've got a ton of questions coming through every single week. You guys leave a bunch of them in the comment section on that live stream. So be sure to head on over youtube.com forward slash click with again. And uh, guys, we will be doing that live stream then. So thank you all again so much for all your support. If you guys have any fantasy questions and you're not going to be available for the Sunday show, I will try to answer them if you leave them in the comment section of this video below. So go ahead and do that if you guys would. Thank you all again so much for all the support, and I'll see you guys next week. Good week, good luck this weekend, guys, in your fantasy leagues. Bye-bye.